Okay, hi there. We've covered quite a bit in the last four videos looking at negative externalities and market failure. Here's a chance in this video to go through eight multiple choice questions. Uh, a great chance for you to check your understanding, in particular on government interventions. For each of these questions, just press the pause button whenever you want to take a moment to think about the question, and then we can go through the answers together. So here's our first question. A chemical firm produces toxic fumes that impose costs on society, external costs. The diagram shows the free market equilibrium of the firm's product at price P1 output Q1. The government then imposes a tax on the firm equal to XY. Question is, what? Well, how would this improve resource allocation? Press the pause button. Have a go at this question. OK, question one. This is obviously a pollution tax, a Pigouvian tax, and it's designed to internalise the externality. Can you see the diagram there? It shifts the costs up uh, to reflect the external costs of production and hopefully take output towards the social optimum of Q2 and price P2. Here's question number two. The... A community relies on a private company to supply electricity using a coal-fired technique. The power station causes air pollution, which imposes an external cost shown in the diagram. The government then decides to impose a tax on the company to correct the market failure. What represents the tax? OK, so please press the pause button. Here we go, question two, similar question, negative externality from production, social cost above private cost. The government's imposed a tax to try to internalise the externality. And the tax that needs to be imposed is the vertical distance between social and private cost. So the correct answer there is X, Y. It could also have been W, Z, but W, Z does not appear as one of the options. So a tax of X, Y is enough to internalise the externality. Now, question three is quite hard. It's one of the new questions. So I think it's definitely worth pressing that pause button and taking a moment to think through your answer. The table shows a firm that has four possible methods of production to make its desired output. Each method has a different cost and causes a different amount of pollution. Now, as part of a carbon trading scheme, the government insists that polluting firms must by pollution permits. And those permits cost $90 per tonne of pollution. No pollution can be emitted without a permit. The question is which method of production has the least total cost. So take a moment, press the pause button and then just press play when you want to go through the answer. OK, so here this is pollution permits. So firms have to buy uh, permits for each tonne of pollution they cause. So essentially, on the right-hand side there, you've got to multiply the amount of pollution caused by $90 to get the cost of having to buy the carbon permits. So let's work it through. Option A has a cost of $590. Option B, $560. Option C, $570. Option D is the highest cost. No pollution, but... Uh, High production costs, 700. So, in fact, the method of production which says the least total cost is option B. I hope you got that right. If you did, superb effort. Question four. When will an economic activity create a net social benefit? Have a go. So, when will an economic activity create a net social benefit? The answer is when the social benefit which is private benefit plus external benefit, is bigger than the social cost, which is private cost plus external cost. So the answer there is B. Question five, which policy by a government would increase the negative externalities that result from people smoking cigarettes? Have a go at question five. So here we go. This could be an example perhaps of government failure where... Uh, policy causes increased negative externalities. The right answer here is C. If you ban substitutes, e-vaping and all that kind of stuff, nicotine patches, etc., that means that uh, the demand for substitutes will go down, more people will smoke, 
and thereby create more external costs. Question six. In India, environmental laws mean chemicals must be disposed of at specialist waste management centres. To avoid the costs, some firms have dumped chemicals in lakes and rivers. Such illegal dumping of chemicals is an example of what? Have a go, please, at question six. This is a good question. In the UK, for example, they brought in the, uh, the, the, the tax on landfill many years ago. And that led to many more people dumping their industrial household waste, building waste in fields and things to avoid the landfill tax. And that is an example of the free rider, when people can get away with doing that without imposing any cost on themselves, but clearly imposing an external cost on society. Hey, we've got two more questions to go. How are you doing? If you get all eight out of right, all eight out of eight, you're doing incredibly well. These are all, by the way, past exam questions. In an economy, competitive firms supply electricity that's generated using coal-fired power stations. If the government tries to reduce pollution by imposing an indirect tax on the firms, what would that cause? Have a go at question seven. It takes us back, of course, to the idea of pollution taxes. Uh, tax will affect the actual costs of a firm, it will affect the marginal supply costs of a firm. So the right answer here is C. If it affects all firms, it's going to shift the market supply curve to the left because effectively those electricity companies will have higher costs if they continue to use coal-fired power stations. We have one final question, I think, for you. Question eight. One way to allocate road space in a congested city would be to charge drivers to use the roads. Now, one reason why this policy is likely to result in a more efficient allocation of resources is, well, which one is it? It's A, B, C or D. Have a go, please, at question eight. OK, so I reckon some of you must be pretty close to getting them all right. If you have, that is incredibly superb effort. So one reason why road pricing would be a more efficient allocation is, well, there's a couple of plausible answers here, but the right answer is C. Road use would be rationed to those who benefit it the most. If you have, if you impose an extra private cost on people using the road, then people doing a sort of cost benefit analysis think, well, is it worth my while using using this road space? It depends on the marginal benefit that I'm getting relative to the marginal cost of the private benefit relative to the private cost. So some marginal road users would decide not not to use their their cars, perhaps use alternative transport. So the answer there is question, uh, question eight is C. Well, there we go. We've done eight questions on intervention. In the next video, we are going to take a few minutes to think about positive externalities from consumption.